Guys, I don't know about you, but I have made some serious mistakes this year as a content creator. And even though I said I don't know about you, I actually do know that a few of you have made similar mistakes or different mistakes too. And I know this because I speak with you guys all the time. And in today's video, I want to spend some time reflecting on these mistakes so that we do not continue doing them in the year 2023 and beyond. Before we get into it, if you enjoy this type of content, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. I upload new content every single week. Also, I'm very excited for this video to be sponsored by Maple. More on them later. Let's get to it. Okay, first mistake that I would like us to leave in 2022 is what I'm going to call trend hopping. So this is the process of creators jumping on trends because they feel like they have to rather than actually wanting to. So maybe I'll call it inauthentic trend hopping. I feel like that's probably a better name, right? So let me give you an example. Do you remember when Instagram Reels were first blowing up? This was in like 2021. And there were a lot of creators who were doing like the... <laughs> and like dancing and stuff. I'm so sorry if, if that still exists and do you think I'm making fun of you? I'm not. I'm just reflecting on a time where pretty much all reels were like that, right? Now, what I got a lot of people saying to me was like, well, actually a lot of people said two different things to me. First of all, Jade, why don't you do reels like that? And second of all, Jade, I don't wanna do reels like that, but I feel like I have to. And the answer to both of those questions is pretty similar. I did not create videos like that because it did not feel authentic to me. You should not create videos like that if it does not feel authentic to you. The reason why is, if you force yourself to jump all these trends that you don't actually want to be doing, right? If you're forcing yourself to use audio that you don't actually find funny, if you're forcing yourself to do TikTok dances when you don't actually enjoy dancing, we can tell, like your audience can tell. They can pick up on the fact that this style of format, this trend isn't on brand for you and it won't land. So all you've done is set yourself up for so much anguish because you're like getting in your head about it. You're forcing yourself to create this content that you don't want to create and then you create it and it doesn't perform well. And then you're thinking, why? It's performing well for everyone else. When the actual answer is, it's performing well for people who actually enjoy creating that style of content. So whilst yes, we have to push ourselves out of our comfort zone and sometimes we do have to, you know, create content more frequently than we would like to perhaps. When it comes to the style of content you're doing, it is well within your right to keep that on brand for you. Okay, mistake number two that we are leaving in this year, okay, is letting haters dictate your content. Now, I will put my hands up and say that I have almost fallen into this trap before, mostly at the start of my journey. Luckily, I realized it was a trap and I managed to avoid it, but it's a trap that I see a lot of people falling into, right? And let me give you an example of when I've almost fallen into the trap. I remember when I first started my TikTok, which to be fair, wasn't even that long ago. It was like at the start of 2022. And I remember I got some comments from people being like, just who hated my niche. They hated the fact that I create content where I'm helping other people become content creators or entrepreneurs. They were like, everyone doesn't have to be a creator. Everyone doesn't want to be an entrepreneur. Obviously, I've never said that that's the case, but like they clearly had a vendetta against creators who, I don't know, help people in the way that I do or speak about the content in the way that I do, right? And I hadn't actually come across that before because the thing is, on platforms like Instagram, on YouTube, your content is mostly pushed out to people who are looking for similar content to yours. So most of the time, you guys, when you see my videos, it's because you're actually interested in the topics that I'm talking about. Whereas on TikTok, that's not the case. Half of the people who see your content are interested in your topic. The other half are just random people on the internet, right? So you get exposed to a lot of people who just don't like your niche. There will always be people who don't like your niche. It doesn't matter how noble you think your niche is um, or like how unique or even how beneficial you think your niche is to society. Like there will always be people who hate your niche, right? And I remember I got some comments and I started to think, oh my gosh, Am I being as helpful as I think I'm being? Or am I just giving loads of people loads of work? Or am I just encouraging loads of people to use social media? Then maybe they should be using it, right? I started to get in my head a bit and I was like, is this actually a good thing for me to be talking about? Granted, that spiral lasted all of about four minutes. And then I caught myself and I was like, no, no. There are plenty of people who get a lot of value from my content. I'm not gonna stop servicing them just because some people don't wanna hear it. Like those people can just stop looking at my content, right? Now, this manifests itself in loads of different forms. I remember there was a member of the Creators Club, which is my membership club, who posted on the Facebook group saying, hey guys, I need your advice. I'm thinking about taking down this, I think it was a reel that she posted. She was like, I'm thinking about taking it down because I got a comment from someone which was like really rude and it made me really self-conscious about like the filter that I was using. And I immediately jumped on it and I was like, if you are gonna take this video down, it cannot be because of that comment, right? The only reason why I ever really think taking a video or a piece of content down is worth it is if you think it's gonna offend someone in some 
one way or if it doesn't align with your values and you don't realize until you actually share it then i'm like oh my god yeah re remove it but when it comes to you taking something down because someone said like why are you using that filter or because someone just hates your niche that you're in we're not creating content for them those are not the people we're creating content for we're creating content for our audience who actually get value from the stuff that we're sharing so just an example of two ways that, that can manifest itself but it can massively derail your career if you start to change your niche or change your content because of a few people on the internet who don't like it you will never ever be able to create content that everyone loves as wild as that sounds and as upsetting as that is we will never be able to do that so let's focus on our audience and listen to them when they give us feedback versus like the random haters on the internet <laughs> next mistake not hiring someone who is either smarter than you or quicker at doing something than you now i feel really passionately about this one because i've got a few people in my team my team is really small and they are all smarter and quicker than i am at doing certain things for example my video editor can edit videos at the speed of light i would actually love just to watch him edit a video one day because i, I don't fully understand how he gets it done so quickly something that would take me eight hours he can do in an hour right great example of me hiring someone who can do something quicker than i can my marketing va is a very talented copywriter i do not enjoy writing i could do it from time to time but i've got to be in a very specific mood and that that mood pops up like once every seven months <laughs> i'm just not a natural writer she is so she's quicker than me and she's smarter at me at that, that as well right so think about where your areas are in your business that you could potentially use some help with because oh my gosh my trajectory would be very different if i didn't hire the people that i hired to help me out now this is the part of the video where i want to introduce you to a company called maple you may have heard me talk about maple in the past i love to tell you guys about maple services especially in the context of what we're talking about right so we're talking about hiring smarter people and hiring people who are quicker at doing things than we are and if you're looking for someone who's going to help you do that look no further because Maple has the best marketing freelancers and boutique agencies available for you to hire to help you with your journey. Now, there are a few different things that I love about Maple. One of the things I want to speak about today is the fact that they are so data driven. So a lot of the time when you're hiring someone to join your team, it can feel like a really daunting task because realistically, you are hoping that you found the right person who's going to help you reach your goals. And a lot of the time, we don't necessarily have the data or the processes set up to help us ensure that we've hired the right person to reach our goals right maple can do that for you so maple will help you find a vetted marketing freelancer bear in mind they have like over 600 vetted marketing freelancers right so people who they've actually looked into their work and they have actually decided that they are very good at their craft so they can connect you with over 600 different marketing freelancers but the way in which they connect you with these freelancers is backed by data so they basically match you with your potential freelancer by looking at 25 different success factors and in addition to that, they also enforce unbiased monitoring to actually check how your freelancer is performing. So the work that the person you've hired is doing for your company is actually continuously monitored and evaluated. So it's unlike when you hire someone from other companies and then they kind of give you the freelancer and then they're like, good luck, Maple don't do that. They actually stick with you throughout the process in the sense that they will keep track of how your content and how your marketing is performing as a result of the person who you've hired. You will also get a dedicated growth strategist who will provide strategic recommendations for you, your brand, your business that will just even further ensure that you are going to see success with the freelancer who you have hired. So if you are ready to invest in Maple, I've put a link in my description. I really recommend checking them out because realistically, when you hire someone, it's not something you wanna take a chance on. I know this from personal experience. I've hired a few people in the past where it's not worked out and it's very, very difficult mistake to reverse. So why not just cut all of that out and just use Maple to make sure that you're getting someone who's very talented and who's actually going to help you reach your goals. Next mistake that you might be making but that we're gonna leave in 2022 is value without a persona. So this is a very recent problem. I think this mistake has completely manifested itself in the year of 2022, maybe towards the end of 2021, but it's very recent. And the best way for me to explain what I'm talking about here is to use my own niche. So there has been a rise of social media gurus. I was gonna do this, and then I realized that I'm very, I, that is that is what I am. <laughs> so let's not make fun of myself. <laughs> there is a rise of social media gurus, especially around lockdown. Again, that is me, I am describing myself. There is no hate. 
this is literally who I am, right? Although, you know, I did work in marketing for years, but this is very much who I've become. Now, the thing is, is because of the rise of so many people entering a niche like this one, the way in which people have entered it, well, not everyone, but some people have entered it, is by replicating what existing gurus have created. So what they've ended up doing is thinking, okay, well, I'm gonna become like an Instagram expert. So therefore they start sharing content and online, which has very generic tips and focuses completely on like educational value and has none of their own personality, none of their own strategies, nothing that's personal to them infused throughout it. And what ends up happening is that you end up just regurgitating what is already online. So you end up just kind of being a place where people can follow or look into if they wanna hear like generic advice about social media. And it's worth saying that this isn't just for my niche, this, this has kind of happened across the board. And if you look at all the different value points that a person can have as a creator, yes, educational value is one, but there are also entertainment creators and that's a form of value as well. And the same kind of mistake is seen in that form of creator too, where a creator enters the market and they start sharing like entertaining pieces of content that aren't personal to them that they don't actually like and that they're just basically copying from other people so like okay a good example of this in this niche would be you know the um kardashian skits and this comes to mind because there's been a lot of talk on tiktok about this recently and um, there are a few creators i think there's one in particular who maybe like champions this idea of like recreating kardashian scenes um, and then loads of other creators have kind of entered the scene and done the same thing and some of them will see success because they've kind of tweaked it and made it their own whereas a lot of them won't because they're just copying what already exists and they're not making it their own in any way so all of this to say that this doesn't mean that you can't enter a niche that you know or creators are already successful in that's not what i'm saying at all because you completely can what i'm saying is if you're going to do that you need to make sure that you're making it your own in some way. How are you going to share a piece of educational information in a way that feels unique to you? How are you gonna throw in your own strategies? How are you gonna put your personality into your funny reel? Like, what are you gonna do to make it more unique to you, to give people a reason to be loyal to you versus seeing your channel as like disposable or vague or like generic? Okay, this next mistake, I'm hoping we're gonna leave in 2022, but if I'm being honest, I don't think we're gonna leave it. I don't think we are, but I, do you know what? No, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be positive. I'm gonna be positive about it. I think we're gonna leave this mistake in 2022. The mistake is giving up too soon. Notice I said too soon there because sometimes in life you do need to give up on things, but like in this context, what I'm talking about is when you give up too soon. So the thing is with how we all exist in this day and age is that we have become quite addicted to instant gratification. When we do something, we expect to see instant results. And I definitely think it's a generational thing. There are definitely generations who don't have this same addiction that we do, but a lot of us, and I'm mostly talking about like young Gen X, millennials, Gen Z, because we've grown up with the internet, like we are so accustomed to doing something and seeing an instant response. Now, what that has led to is a bunch of creators, myself included from time to time, feeling discouraged because we do something and then we don't, our life doesn't change immediately. And we're like, what's, what's going on? <laughs> that reel was great why am i not a millionaire right <laughs> because we're so addicted to instant gratification it can be very demoralizing when we have to put a lot of hard graft into something which is not garnering any results and then what happens is that we give up too quickly because we're like well it's not working when the reality is that most of us are giving up after like three months <laughs> we're like giving it a go couple months on tiktok couple months on instagram and then we're like nah it's not working you know jane i've not gone viral yet what's what's going on this is broken when in reality is it actually could often take a lot longer than that i mean sometimes it can take years and like i know that puts a lot of people off and if it does then fair like if you know straight away that you're not willing to wait a couple years to see success on social media then it's completely within your right to decide that that's not the right route for you but in reality we all have to have in our head that it can take a couple years for us to see traction and it doesn't mean that what you're doing is wrong or that instagram hates you or that things are broken we just have to be more patient if this is truly something we want to see success with it's like that photo do you ever see that photo of like the minor um there was like two minors and then one minor turns around and the other one keeps on going and the minor who turns around was just about to reach the diamond it's something like that i'm gonna put a photo on the screen you know what i mean it's like more often than not we give up just before we start to see success in something and i always think back to my initial few months on youtube when i was literally 
grafting like every spare minute I had I was working on this YouTube channel I was working full-time I was like so busy and I was just working all Saturday all Sunday waking up at 5 a.m to work and like it was taking forever and it was taking so much of my energy and I was gaining like one subscriber a week <laughs> And it was so difficult to keep going during those times because I was like, what, am I kidding myself here to continue doing this when I'm seeing absolutely no results? But I continued trying, I continued to get better, I continued to learn the platform. And then I suddenly saw this huge spike in my subscriber count in April 2021 and then the rest was absolutely history. If I gave up in March, I would not have seen that spike and I never would have been where I am right now, which is absolutely wild to think that one decision could have completely derailed, you know, potentially the rest of my life which is insane. Final mistake that we are leaving in 2022 is not having a content creation system. Now, I have made it my personal mission to ensure that we're leaving this mistake in 2022. I reckon I've helped at least 100 creators create one of these this year, at least. 100 creators. What I'm talking about here is a system in which you create your content. So if I give you two drastic comparisons between someone who doesn't have a content creation system and someone who does. The person who doesn't have a content creation system is someone who kind of captures content on the day of posting because they realize they need to post or they upload content and write a caption live or they always upload their YouTube videos on the day that the YouTube video needs to go live. And there's no like folder or system or notepad there's nothing where they're collating content ideas they're just kind of thinking of them on a whim filming it and then posting it when they get a chance now I know that can work for some people but almost everyone I've spoken to that does not work for because what it often leads to is inconsistent uploads and also an inconsistency in quality and more than anything just absolute stress because then you wake up one day and you're like oh my god I've got to film and share a YouTube video by 4 p.m like I couldn't even imagine living that way right well, on the other hand the person who does have a content creation system is someone who has notes folders processes all set up which allows them to continuously come up with creative content ideas film produce edit those content ideas in a really easy way and then schedule everything in advance so that when they wake up and they know that a youtube video needs to go live today or a podcast episode needs to go live they've already filmed it edited it and scheduled it so it just goes live by itself right? That is someone who has a content creation system. If you want more information on that, I actually share like more information on my Instagram content creation system in this video. So I recommend watching it. Um, or you can DM me the word ready on Instagram and we can talk about if I've got any programs that can help you create this or help you with any of your other goals, right? Because there's no way I could be a content creator if I did not have a system in place. There is no way. I'm on like five channels. There's absolutely no way no way okay those mistakes that i think we should all agree right now let's all make a pledge to each other that we are leaving those mistakes in 2022 i hope you found this video useful remember to check out maple if you're looking to hire a marketing freelancer who is vetted um, and who is high quality and is going to help you reach your goals there is a link in my description if you feel like hanging around i recommend watching this video it's all about my top tips for standing out online which is an incredibly important subject for all creators to be well versed in going into the new year. Thank you so much for watching guys. I will see you in my next video.